I'm Rob Lacuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby here with Mr. and Mrs. Smith composer David Fleming. David, in the show, romance coexists with car chases and gunfights. And so it's fitting that the emotional tones that underpin the score are ambiguous and mercurial and edgy. And so I was wondering, first of all, what was your primary inspiration and intention for when you first signed up for the project and you were starting to work on the, the tone and the instrumentation? Yeah, I mean, the primary thing that, you know, I, when I talked to Donald, actually, uh, Don Glover uh, at the start of this was, you know, he he said the show's about trust. And that's, you know, trusting your professional partner, trusting your romantic partner. And it really was kind of trying to tell those two stories, you know, of their relationship as spies and their sort of blossoming romance as kind of one story so the music had to had to serve both purposes and you know it, i feel like you know starting a relationship there's like always an element element of espionage anyway because there's there's things about yourself that you're kind of holding back and and you're not you're not quite sure what you're getting on the other side and it, as as another person sort of unfolds to you you you, you know the relationship deepens and i think the same thing happens in the show where they they really are trying to figure figure each other out and and there's so much that they're kind of um you know holding back about themselves and and it it takes a while for them to get on the same page which is which was really interesting and i think relatable too I, they're they're not like a they're not a practiced super cool spy team they are are kind of you know uh, just making it work and and flying by the seat of their pants so uh I think there was something really relatable and and uh, and refreshing about that. Yeah, but on tracks like Meet Cute and Snowplow and Hi Hi, I was thinking, you know, I was getting a little bit of Run Lola Run and maybe Drive Social Network. Like, there's um, they're they're dense and they're they're pensive and quite layered. And a great word that you've used in the past to explain the vibe of the score is momentum. I love that you've said that. And I want to talk about that a bit more because that's precisely what the score helps achieve. I think talk us through how you wanted to give us the sense that we're on this really fast moving journey with John and Jane, but it's still a little whimsical and a little unknown and, and how that really kind of works with the more action packed parts of the series. Yeah. I mean, part of it was, I just wanted it to be fun to watch, you know, part, part of it was, I, I felt like, that was my job to 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 help it be more fun and and also like I wanted to be having fun writing it too like I've never thought about uh, so much about like an audience perspective than when watching the show of if I was watching the show what would sort of engage me uh, in this so yeah the momentum was was huge and and kind of um, especially in in the very beginning because they have you know Francesca Sloan uh the showrunner and Hiro Mirai who directed the first episode they they just cut this really unique kind of tempo both to how you know the actors interact and and how the story sort of unfolds it it's again all, very relatable because there's there's a lot of kind of awkward energy and and getting to to know each other so it was really important that like when the music kicked in especially in the first episode that it was it was saying like okay we're we're on our way to something you know um the interesting thing especially about how hero mirai directs is that he's got this way of you know keeping it like simmering at like a four or five so then when it finally kicks in at a at a 10 and there's a couple times where it happens it's so uh shocking and engaging um, cause you're sort of, you're sort of like, okay, I'm watching a romance. Uh, I'm watching sort of an awkward getting to know you. They, they're like me. They're not, they're not real spies. And, and then all of a sudden the story really takes a turn. And, um, yeah. so it was fun kind of being complicit in, in, you know, those, those sort of managing the tempo of that. He is Hero Murai, by the way, is so damn good at that. He did the same mm -hmm. kind of thing in Station Eleven, and he does it beautifully in this. Um, I highly recommend everybody to listen to this score on with noise cancelling headphones because it features this really boundary pushing, eccentric percussive synth sound that I could not get enough of. 
What do you most love about composing with predominantly electronic instrumentation? Well, I wouldn't say it's even the, the predominantly electronic instrumentation. I think for this score, it was predominantly sort of um, percussive kinds of of things like like in that in you reference that meet cute track um which was kind of the first thing i did for the show um it's it, it is a lot of synths and it's also like a kalimba featured quite heavily and and it's it's kind of the marrying of the of the electronic and the organic like like what i what i really wanted for this this score was um it was actually i was listening to a, a nancy sinatra uh uh track from one of the bonds it was uh you only live twice and it starts with this this sort of like upwards line and and my thought was like if i had found this as a vinyl in the basement you know and having that as like a sample and treating it more in a modern context like like a like a hip-hop record or something how how could i approach a score how could i like create my own samples and so rather than it just be um an electronic score i wanted it to be you know framed with electronic instruments but um but to to have live performances and then almost treat them as if i had if i had just discovered them and and sort of sampled them so to speak so a lot of it was was honestly just going around my room pulling old instruments that i haven't used in in forever and just like okay this um you know there there is that that sort of first week of working on a score when you're like what the hell is this going to be and and you just pull anything close to you um but uh but yeah i always wanted it to achieve this um this feeling of of i think what the show does well in general which is um take something classic in this case the spy genre and how do we make it feel fresh and modern without rejecting any of those of those sort of you know tropes that made us fall in love with those types of stories in the first place how do we sort of work them in lovingly and we don't want to do a pastiche but we also don't want to disregard and and so so for me it was really about how to make the the modern stuff uh work with something that felt more classic yeah and that's why the the fusing of the organic and the electronic really works in that wheelhouse and it does for these there's a really interesting mix of pensive sounds that invoke evoke sorry ambivalence and tension and i was wondering if you could explain or give us an example of a cure or motif where you employ um certain instruments to elicit that feeling of dread and mystery that is so pivotal to the show's tone yeah i'll, I'll tell you the the uh the scene that really made me feel like okay we're on the right track was in the second episode there's this uh where john Turturro is the guest star there's the scene where um he has john and jane they're sort of they're sort of shadowing him they're following him and and he has them uh uh, uh engage in a very specific type of uh fetishistic kind of role play and um they you know, Francesca, Francesca uh, Sloan, and she she sort of pointed the scene out early on and was like, this is going to be a tough nut to crack because she wanted it to feel like um, dread and but sexy and like it's a funny situation, but it has to feel like this this weird, dark ritual sort of like sort of like if you found yourself all of a sudden at an eyes wide shut party, you know, um, and uh and we ended up doing uh just just really sparse uh synth drums and like mouth percussion and it was just this this really weird kind of uh i, I don't know it was like a like a cult piece uh i can't i can't explain what it was but when we played it uh for them uh they were just kind of like howling with laughter and and I was like, okay, we're on, we're on the right track here. Um, I, I mean, the, the, the North star for me was Francesca said early on, I, I was doing some, ver some cue and she was like, what's the art school version of this? And that kind of became, um, art school espionage was always the thought process. How do we do this, but not in, um, in an obvious way? How do we, how do we make this as if it wasn't a big Amazon show? How do we make it if we were 
messing around with with our friends uh, in art school and just trying the weirdest things possible. So, so that was that was really that was kind of what I always tried to keep in mind with doing this is like how to be surprising and and have fun with just uh, you know um, being as weird as I could. Yeah, keeping it and you kept it quite grounded and which. I don't know why, how it works in my brain, but it made me really kind of connect with John and Jane in as regular people, uh, even right. though they're not. Um, on that note, thank you so much for your insight, though, uh, David. It's really fascinating. We're going to bring you back shortly, though, for our panel. Great. Thanks, Rob.